Be the Good with Kate shows each of us how it is possible to find and follow our passions at any age. But not only that, we can do this while making the world a better place along the way. I'm Kate Cherichello, and I'm on a mission to shine a light on the positive news all around us. I hope Be the Good with Kate inspires you to live your purpose and go out and be the good in the world. Guests have included a Broadway music director, ex-convict, hospital clown, nonprofit leaders, people who've lost those closest to them, people who have found their calling in their 60s, and my kindergarten teacher. Join me each week as I have the honor of sharing these stories with you. You can find Be the Good with Kate on all podcast platforms and YouTube. Subscribe there or go to katechericello.com slash be the good to be updated when new episodes are released. Welcome back to Be the Good with Kate. Today, I am so pleased to introduce you to Sasha Lipskaya. Sasha is an intuitive guide, spiritual coach, and sacred intimacy mentor to soul-driven leaders and light workers who want to experience deeper love and devotion, serve their higher purpose, and embody their worth with power, integrity, and faith. Sasha, thanks so much for being here with me today. Thank you for having me, Kate. It really, it's such a pleasure to be with you. I know we've waited for a while for this to happen, so I'm so happy. Thank you for, thank you for just creating this amazing podcast. What you're doing is so just inspiring. Yeah. Well, thank you. But I mean, seriously, right back at you, you're just all about Bring, lifting people up and sending those good vibes, as people say, out into the world. So I gave a little bit about you, but please tell everybody a bit more about who you are. Oh, who am I? I I, <laughs> I love that question because you know it's it's. I feel like are in the in this realm, the work that we do as just this embodied grace is what I feel. What mm-hmm. I am is discovering more of how that grace wants to manifest in, you know, in my coaching, I do more of a spiritual guidance mentorship work where I create experiences for beings who want to connect to the divine, whether it's, you know, they want to call it God or universe, but whatever that divine essence of themselves is. So my work really is to create a container where that could be experienced. And I have always my whole life felt that connection. And so played in different roles, right? Played in different realms to deepen it. I was an artist, an actor for a very long time. And I still feel that that actually is the major driving force of my life is creating and in a way performing, right? Using my body, my voice movement. And so that's a big part of how I hold space is tantric work, embodiment work, right? So mystical experiences that are being literally evoked through the body. And now that I, you know, have created a practice of guidance and mentorship, I call myself a tantric intuitive guide because I use my intuition obviously as one of the major modalities. Um, And it is a skill. It is something that although we're born with, we need to learn to develop. So part of the work that I do is teaching people how to do that for themselves and therefore connect to the divine through the virtue of intuitive embodiment um, and really hearing their heart. And so the way that I really show up in the world right now is determined by what my heart asks me to do. And so you catch me at an interesting time because I feel that I am actually being rebirthed in my business in the way that I show up. I'm like, oh, it's it's like this this part of me that is awakening to what is possible, but it actually requires, and this is where I love to take my clients in the next level of your awakening to your purpose, right? To your destiny, to that part of you that hasn't been ready to come through yet, but you can just feel it. It requires sacrifice, right? It requires the burning down of the structures that I don't even want to say don't serve, but they don't serve now, right? So they may have served like up until two minutes ago, but in this moment, it's like, no, you are now called to not just burn it down, but do it with grace and honoring and also just fierceness. So like, no, it's not true anymore. I'm here now and I don't know what's next, but it can't happen from a place of that aligned heart force, right? The heart force of I'm here to gift this world with who I am. And I'm here to madly, madly love this world as who I am. It requires the death of who I thought I was. And so 
who I am is I'm a woman being rebirthed into the next level of whatever I get to do, which I get to mentor and guide, but also now deepening my work as an embodiment artist in the sense of actually creating transmissions and channeling whatever I receive as part of my YouTube channel, my podcast, and bringing those experiences, obviously, in the live containers that I hold with my clients. So I hope that that answers a little bit of that question, but... (laughs) It does. It answers it, but it also, (laughs) it also opens up so many other questions. And something I really love that you said within that is, you said it requires sacrifice too. And I think that's something we don't talk about much in the idea of finding our purpose and our passions is that idea of there are elements that are sacrificed. And so I'm really glad that you mentioned that along the way too. Yeah. Sacrifices. I feel like it's, it's, it's like devotion, right? Mm-hmm. Devotion is a word we need to reclaim. Like my life is now about devotion. And so devotion requires that you say no, right? To uh, something you thought was awesome and valuable. That is the sacrifice you're being asked to do in service to what matters to you most, right? So you get to, it's almost like you get to learn the depth of your own love by choosing to sacrifice something, right? That's the whole point of sacrifice. It's it's worship, it's ritual, right? It's I offer myself fully so much so, I trust so much so, I have so much faith, right? In the calling of my heart right now that I'm willing to give up everything because I know that whatever I consider that to be, right? It's the everything that I'm gonna be giving up is actually not me. It's not real. If I can give it up, it can't be real. Whatever is real can't be taken away. It can't be lost, right? So nothing real can be threatened, right? This is a line from A Course in Miracles. Some people know this, mm. you know, this, I want to call it a book. It's a mystery school. But in any sacred text, right, it's that level of the hero's awakening where they realize they've been held on to, to a carrot. You know, they thought, oh, this is my purpose. This is my purpose. And then you literally zoom out and you're like, wait, that's kindergarten. Like, oh my God, like that, I mean, that's great. Good for me. Like this, yay, right? Yay. But also, oh my God, no, like I'm here for this. Like, this is what I'm here for. And I, I don't like, I, I, I don't, uh, apparently I'm ready to do it because I'm right here and it's calling me and I wouldn't have come had it not been for this carrot. So, okay, that's great. And that's what I mean. In that moment, you actually have to sacrifice the carrot and whatever you thought it was going towards. It's like all of this beautiful, you know, ecstatically, just beautifully arranged, right? It's almost like a movie that you're like, oh yeah, this is the vision of my life. Totally. I'm here. And they're like, wait, oh, it was literally just to get me here. And now I'm asked to have so much faith that whatever's behind it is actually the only thing I've ever wanted, right? It's the only thing I've ever desired. I couldn't know what it was because it wasn't here yet, but I was drawn to it by virtue of having this dream of that, whatever that thing was, right? And then now I'm asked to sacrifice it so that I could receive the actual thing that I wanted, but I didn't have the capacity to know what it was, right? And that's what people don't get sometimes. Like, But I know what I want is like, until you know the depth of your soul, right? Until you really, you feel like this is who I am. Like it has no identity, it has no gender, but I know it, right? It's like, this is me, this is Kate. Kate soul is this until you know that you don't know what you need because that part of you is the only part of you that could truly want what is in your highest good. And it will give you little signs and, you know, like the breadcrumbs and that's back to the, the thing that you will sacrifice. It won't feel like a sacrifice in the sense of I'm giving up the most valuable thing. It won't not to your soul, but it will feel like a death and a sacrifice to your mind, right into your identity because that is the sacrifice. It's the, am I willing to give up everything I thought I knew to recognize the truth of what I am, not who, what I am. And that is right. That's not for everyone, but that's what actually everyone wants in the end. That's what we want. We want freedom, right? We want peace. We want that awareness of our purpose back to meaning, right? Doing good in the world. We want to know that what we came here for is going to be done by us. And also that it's actually good and it's being received and it makes a difference. And that we can step out of this container and say, everything is gone. But that which I brought from my heart will forever, Mm. right? Influence and impact and make the world better forever. (sighs) That's what we want. 
Yeah. So yeah. that is what I'm talking about. That's the thing will require the sacrifice of everything. Else. <laughs> and so now I'm I'm so intrigued because you obviously this is so in your oh, lights out on your side. Here we go. It's okay. <laughs> Electricity. There we go. <laughs> You have such a passion. Your heart is so full in speaking about this topic. I can tell. Now, how did you find a way to make this also a career? Because that's something that's come up quite a few times in recent episodes is, you know, sometimes your passion is your full-time job. Sometimes yeah. it has nothing to do with ma- what makes money, but it is your passion. Yeah. And how did you find a way to kind of put it all together? So that beautiful. Thank you. Because obviously when you asked me what who I was, like that's part of obviously how I manifest. What I do is having actual work in the world that I receive wonderful 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 support from uh, which includes yes i make a living doing it right and how i ended up doing this work specifically is i you know in my acting work and through through my academic career so i also studied media communications philosophy you know like i went everywhere every everywhere where i was interested in and at the same time i'd always had a very deep connection to spirituality right so not just religious traditions but also that different esoteric teachings. I was given the space to actually explore it from a very young age because of my family's background and the multicultural, multi-spiritual, multi-religious environment I was in. So although I was not aware of how rare that was, right, I, I, I really appreciated it. And I really, again, back to that drive to connect to the divine and work with channeling, I started doing that very young. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. But I'm like, oh, I'm performing. Right. I want to be an actor. So then that the carrot, right. The carrot led me. Like, I'm going to be an actor. Right? I was like, yeah, here I am. And I was like, wait, no, 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 this is not quite. I'm not sure. Like, yes. Yeah, so, so that was what happened. I was like, okay, this is not really what I want to do, though. Like, I don't mm-hmm. want to read a script and be in audition rooms and, you know, be in this show business, like thinking about what I look and how I, you know, show up for other people's expectations. That's not why I wanted to act. Okay. Right? I wanted to channel something that was coming through me and I obviously wanted people to hear and receive it. Yes. But this is not the way, right? That's not art. Mm-hmm. And it's a necessary part of art is, yes, the structure around it, including business. And we'll talk about that. But it's where it comes from, right? Where are you actually leading from? And so I started getting into my head and you know my my ego, and it just became like I was suffering it. Right? I was not enjoying it, and so I stepped out of that career, and it was a big back to sacrifice. Big like I was like I can't do it and be true to who I am, but I don't really know where I'm supposed to go if I don't give this up. Like I knew that, so I had to step out and be literally what I call in the birth canal. I've been in there since many times. <laughs> now I'm in there again, but I was there for the first time then. I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I was like, who am I and what? So I actually pursued coaching because I'd always been told back to, you know, my whole life, I have been told, you know, you have a gift for holding space and people would come for not even coaching right coaching doesn't actually include giving advice at all like it's the opposite of giving advice but i was actually usually the person people would come to for advice Mm -hmm. and for whatever would come through me and it wasn't my personal advice that's that i know it was something sometimes it was a little bit personal but most of the time it really didn't come from you know i think it was something was thinking through me right and feeling through me and feeling that person and i would give them what came and so it looked like wisdom, but really it was something that was just channeled through me and it wasn't mine, right? But I was able to tap in and because of my acting training, because of this, again, affinity for performance and embodiment, I'd always been able to actually use my body to feel and hear and my intuition, right, was on fire and everywhere. Um, so everything, you see how, how everything is aligned. So I stepped out of acting and then I actually pursued coaching as it's almost like this middle ground where, okay, I'm not sure I'll be a therapist. Maybe I will, I'll, I'll do energy healing, right? Somebody was telling me I should pursue that. They saw that in, okay, I'm, I was studying that. So I was going through all of these different modalities, right? That I could use to allow this channeling to come through, but also to actually back to what we want to do, help people, right? Support them, have them experience what I felt was the most important thing, which was that feeling of aliveness and divinity. And I didn't have words for it then. Right. So it was like, well, awakening to your purpose, right? Finding, finding your 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 soul's voice, right? 
expanding your potential, right? Your mindset, like all of these terms that now I'm like, no, it's all about finding God. That's what it is. <laughs> right. That's what that's, I'll just say that this is what for me and for most of the people I work with, you know, we don't shy away from that word usually in my work anyway. Um, although I respect anybody who has any, you know, kind of trauma around it. I feel we need to reclaim it. So I'll say it again. Finding God, which means finding your soul. That's it, right? And and so I ended up working as a coach, right? As classically trained coach. And it was a beautiful training I had, right? So I started exploring that. And that, Kate, actually led me to another dark night of the soul where I was like, well, but business, but how do I, right? So back to, mm-hmm. oh, now I've got an Instagram. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I'm like, this is like show business all over again. I'm like, I can't do this. So I literally pulled the plug like two years. I was like, I was working. I had clients and people were paying. And I was like, I can't do this. Ah. So I stepped out. It's like, I can't do it in integrity with how I know this work mm. needs to come from me. I can't lead with this. I want to be, you know, whatever big coach or the, like, it can't be that. I, so I pulled out, went to graduate school, went deeper into intersectional feminism, philosophy, you know, understanding again, spirituality and the concepts of power and structures and how we're perceiving spiritual power, how we're perceiving ourselves in in, in society. So that was a really important part because I literally was like, I'm going to go deeper into my spirituality. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to clear this, whatever this is that I clearly am resisting from the, oh, you got to perform as this coach now, right? Like, no, this is not what it's about. But I also will get an understanding of literally how and what it is in our culture, right? That we are so incredibly attached to that is literally in a way um, making us bypass, right? The experience of that spiritual rebirth and that awakening, because I could feel that a lot of the spiritual work that I was kind of going towards was in a way it's like oh this oh everything's great like let's just feel better and like and i'm like no but there is something that i'm missing this is not and that's one of the reasons i was so resistant to marketing and and because i was like we i can't market feel good about yourself and follow me and i know how to do it because that you know i was like no like i no this is not the way so i ended up coming back to my work and call being like literally called back to the coaching world so to speak um when back again i ended my graduate studies you know i completed uh that part of my life and then i was like okay for birth <laughs> right and maybe now i ended up in a position where i was actually invited into that world by like assisting someone else's program you know it's like i literally just like ended up there again but without trying to just okay i'm just gonna live my life i'm gonna let things come to me i don't know exactly where and how but i'm open to the idea that I can go back into this healing work. I can go back into calling myself a guide, a mentor, a coach. I can actually now commit to building a business online from a place of none of that matters. My title, my business, the money I make, the titles I have, none of that is the leading right element to why I want to do it. I can't do it so that I'm successful in someone else's term. I can't do it from a place of, I want to be successful as a coach or I can't, it has to be, I need to do this work because it's coming through me and I have to create a container for it and that I have to take responsibility for. So then I actually organically was really excited. And trust me, I, I say this like, oh, and then it was all great. No. And then there were a lot of, again, dark, little mini dark nights of, oh, coaching back to business and like, not this way. Not this way, not this, not, and it was like a good ride of, oh my God, it's never, and this is what I'm realizing. It's never going to be over. You're always going to be, if you show up and you really give your, right. And you really want to help people, right. You really do have this pure intention. Your inner work becomes critical. It's like washing your hands as a surgeon, right. That part of me that is now able to discern, no, this is not pure. Like my intention isn't pure. This container, it's not evil, right? I'm not, but if I allow for myself to go there, if I use this, I don't know, strategy, for example, right? Or if I use this program, if I use this guidance from someone else, as a, you know, whatever their their thinking is best for me, and it feels right to my vessel, my my instrument, my body is telling me something is off, right? I need to go back into my own my own body and realize where that is clear myself it's not them it's not this it's not 
anywhere outside of me. It's me. Where am I out of alignment? And then from there, I can absolutely make a choice, a decision, choose, you know, a certain strat- strategic, you know, move forward so that I could, yes, expand the way that I can serve people, build a mm-hmm. business, which I've done. And so I've done it that way. It was very intuitive. It was, you know, one client at a time, one person at a time. Everything I've done, every client I've had, pretty much every every client I've had has always come through either referral, word of mouth, experiencing me in person. So I've done it in a way that most people will say is probably really the only way to build a business is relationships, but also in a way, in the most outrageous <laughs> anomaly way, because I haven't actually used any marketing strategy, any sales strategy. Like when I have, that's what I mean. Like I would feel this, no, yeah. not like this, not like mm-hmm. that. Not that it's wrong, not it's not that it's evil, but the part of me that wanted to use anything other than what I have done, which is just show up. I know in that moment, no, I'm coming from control and fear. And when I do it, and it could work in the moment, right? It's like, oh yeah, this is working and da, da, da. I just feel that it's almost like you're performing a play and or watching a movie, right? You're part of this experience. And then there's a commercial, right? And you're like, so nothing wrong back to nothing wrong with marketing and sales when it has its place, right? But after the movie is done, and if somebody wants to watch the commercial, they can. But it's not, I feel like in our work, it is so important to actually own the fact that we can do it another way. Like mm-hmm. we can really, everywhere in our business, I don't believe that we have to sacrifice our integrity. If something feels like I'm going to let something control me, like a strategy or a system or whatever, doesn't feel good to you. If it feels good, if you're like, yeah, this inspires me, this is, my soul says, yes, yeah, go for it. Right. But I know myself and a lot of other people who are literally not in a good way sacrificed, right? They're sacrificing their integrity because they're like, no, this doesn't feel good. I feel trapped. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like literally I'm, I'm scared that this will work because I have to keep doing it. Right? And it's like, that's literally what usually happens. We don't even realize it. Yeah. Back to there is another way. And in the healing arts and in art in general, it is so important to know that since you really are the instrument your transmission will be affected by what you give attention to, right? What you give importance to, what you give your time and your energy to. So if you're doing anything in your business that feels even a little bit just not true, not true. I don't care if it's crazy not to do that. I say trust. It's crazy. It's crazy not to listen to the part of you that says no. Because that's the part of you that will be outrageously true and it will be crazy to everyone else, but it will actually be the most sane thing you can ever do. (laughs) So I know that. Yeah. The the journeys are always so fascinating to me and, and the the surprising aspects Mm -hmm. along the way. Like you showed so many instances of, it was like, this was a surprise that it, it turned out this way. And huh. something I love to ask everyone is what advice do you have for someone who is searching for their passions and trying to make a difference along the way and just feeling like they don't know what step to take next? Oh, so the tuning into really tuning into your body, right. And understanding that there are different ways you can do that. We always say I go to the heart, of course, but for some people it actually is really hard because the, and I, I, in my work, like it's the blocked heart that is called the suffering. It's not, it's closed even, it's blocked, right? So just understanding the path of least resistance, so to speak, going to your gut, right? Going to the part of you that you most sincerely know you can trust, right? That you could feel something there. And usually what that something will say is true, right? So just feel to your body. Is like, is it your womb right? for women? We'll start there and go, okay, is it your gut for men too, right? Is your lower dantian, so to speak, in, in Taoist terms, seat of the soul, right? That part. And then up to your heart. Okay. Just feeling your body and actually asking yourself the question in practice. I say to my clients, like the the work that, again, the work that we do, the answer is in your practice, right? It's not about doing five hours a day of embodiment work, not even an hour. It could be 10 minutes, but that is a requirement because if you don't practice being in intimate spaces within yourself with the divine, if you don't learn what that divine feels like, what it manifests as is in your body, you will never be able to trust it. And and it, 
I say mm-hmm. it, that energy, right? It won't trust you. Mm-hmm. You're not trustworthy if you don't show up, if you don't actually stay the course, right? If you don't devote yourself to hearing what it has to say. So the practice of breathing into your body, just taking a few deep cleansing breaths and feeling where, again, where you're most connected to that part of you that is yearning for the divine. Don't even think about where is the divine, just what part of me wants to feel the divine, right? Okay, so it's my belly. Let's just go there and let your body show you what feels true right now. I want to eat. Is that true? And you'll feel, okay, no, that's not true. Okay, that's what a no feels like. Okay, so it's just 101, but that 101 is the most important and deep teaching mm-hmm. you'll ever have. Let your body show you what the truth feels like. And when you know, look at your life right now, it's presenting you with the most beautiful opportunity to practice mm-hmm. and see what happens, right? Actually see what happens. I had a session uh, yesterday with, with a friend and I had a conversation with her rather more than, more than a session, but still it was an intuitive guidance you know, experience for her and she asked for advice. And we went to where we needed to go, right? But she's somebody who's already practicing, right? She's very tapped in. She could hear the truth. She, in that moment, you know, we made the choice that she's going to act on it. And today, just within 10 hours, she she had the answer she wanted, right? She literally was like, I would love for this to be the answer. I don't know, but I'm going to ask, right? And just and it re- like it re- like revealed itself you know within moments she was like oh my god the deadline for this is today and i didn't even know and i have to just so she did it all and then with you know yeah within it, less than a day she had now confidence trust grounding basically the recognition the proof that what she heard was real and true good and it was acknowledged and it was given right? It Mm -hmm. was actually given to her so that she could follow the path that she's on. So for anybody who is struggling with making a choice, first tune in, figure out what a yes and a no, right? Like yes, no, just feel that. Practice, right? Like is my name Sasha? Yes. Just feel your body. Oh yeah. Is it Kate? No. Right? Just like it's a no. It's not bad. It's just not right. Right? Because it's not true. (laughs) So It's not evil. It's not, it's just not true. So just feel what the truth feels like. And then once you know that feeling, Ask an important question, whatever you're sitting with, your relationship, right? Your health, your your business, like, should I do this? Just ask a simple, should I do this? Feel your body answer and then act on it. And if you don't know, second question, should I do that? And if you don't know, again, still no, like there's no clarity, not this, not this. Like, I still don't know. What is it that I need to know? Mm -hmm. And you might hear, you already know stop asking that might be what you hear and that's the most empowering thing to actually feel inside of your body because it's something else literally sobering you up you know i'm not telling you because i actually need you to own that you already know Mm -hmm. and you go oh and i've never had an experience with somebody who has said no i don't know it's like well let's go deeper it's like oh you know that they suddenly start contradicting and arguing that no but i don't they're like, oh yeah. <laughs> so it's just, there is that release. You need permission to know the truth sometimes, right? So this is back to you trusting that power and that power trusting you. It's a dance. Like, can I trust you? Yeah. Are you really going to listen? Because I'm not going to tell you again. <laughs> okay. And then see what happens. And if mm-hmm. what happens is a complete disaster, back to sacrifice. It's the disaster you need so that you can clear the space to receive what you really want, mm-hmm. right? Is how this works doesn't have to be a disaster, right? But it could be. And it's the best thing that ever happened to you. And it could never be planned, right? Miracles can't be planned. They yeah. just happen. But you have to actively participate and say to your soul, I'm on your side. I'm listening. Yeah. And yeah. oh my gosh, there's so much that we could dive into here. But I'm keeping, I try to keep these brief so that people can then find you and follow yes. you and listen to your show. So please tell everyone where they can find you and hear yes. more about all of this. Thank you. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. So I, my website, sashalipsky.com, you will see, you can see all of the things that I, I love right there. I, I write poetry, you know, my YouTube channel. I have a podcast called Being Brave. So you can yes. tune in. Yes. And Kate, I'll have you on. I'm just putting it oh, on the record. I'd love to hear more of your story. Um, and I feel that, you know, probably the best place to go is my website, but also my YouTube channel is where you would probably experience more of me and hear a little bit pe- here and there. You'll hear pieces of my story if that interests you. And yeah. And then as far as, you know, connecting, just reach out and Excellent. I love 
<laughs> so. you. And there's so many resources you offer online to people too. So reach yes. out and Sasha, I can't thank you enough for sharing your story today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Kate, I appreciate you for, uh, again, just being such a beautiful embodiment of what I spoke about. Cause it's the moment I saw your email, right? We, like you were looking for guests and I would connect it and I felt you. And I was like, I just, I just so look forward to meeting this woman in real life because I could feel she radiates living from her soul. It's not even about you saying that you do this good work or, you know, it actually is very clearly. So you embody it. You can't, the transmission doesn't lie. Right. So it's Thank you. just whatever you do in the world, it will be of great service. So I just really appreciate you doing what you do do. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, Sasha, thank you. Hey there, Kate here. Just wanted to hop on to say a couple quick thank yous. First is to Lisa Marie Falbo and the Your New Jersey team for recently featuring Be the Good with Kate on their television program. What a joy to get to talk to Lisa Marie and to talk about what Be the Good does, what she does, and just that idea of diving into sharing what's good that's going on around us all. Thank you so much for the invitation to be on the show, Lisa Marie. You can find that episode on YouTube if you search Your New Jersey and Be the Good with Kate. Also wanted to say a quick thank you to all of you who've been listening. We are flying through season seven. We are approaching the end of season seven, and we've got a really fun episode next week coming your way with someone who has a television show on PBS. And for this show, she travels around the world and dances with people in all sorts of countries to learn about the cultures, to learn about their traditions. So neat. I can't wait to share that with you. Thanks for listening. Let me know what can I do for you? What do you want to hear more of? Do you have something in your community you would like featured? send it my way. I always love meeting new people. I love getting to show my support. So please do not hesitate. Reach out anytime. My website, katecharicello.com, katecharicello.com slash be the good. will give you all the info on be the good with Kate, or you can find me on Instagram at positively underscore Kate. Have a great rest of your day. In taking classes over the years or observing workout videos, one major piece that is often missing stressing safety and form. Additionally, group fitness classes are often marketed as being open to all levels, yet how often do instructors not give modifications nor progressions so that each participant truly can get what he or she needs out of the class? So that's why I created the 101 series, which take things back to basics with three separate courses, Bar 101, Pilates 101, and Hit 101, focusing on safety and efficiency so you can maximize your workouts, be confident when you step into a group fitness class or workout on your own, be strong in your execution of the most common exercises, and be proud of yourself for taking these huge steps forward on your health journey. Check it out at bebykate.com. The link is in the show notes. Thanks so much for listening to Be The Good with Kate Cherichello. Whether you're listening on YouTube or via podcast, it would mean the world if you liked, subscribed, and or left a review. You heard about the good? Now go out and be the good in your life this week. If you have stories of good news that need to be shared, please send me a message. Thanks again and have a great week.